Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Alexandra Redovanovic. I'm a Salesforce Solution Architect and a Salesforce MVP. I have blonde hair and green eyes, and I'm joining you today from the comfort of my home office. I know that you have seen this slide today too many times, but I'm still, I still have to remind you that Salesforce is a publicly traded company, so the customer should make buying decision only on the products that are currently available. So, what we are going to talk about today, here's the quick agenda. I'm going to remind you how the Salesforce manages data access. I'm going to talk a little bit about our journey and how Salesforce Labs app helped us on our journey to uh, secure our data access. I'm going to go over the permission helper components, do the quick demo, and then I'm going to give you next steps and resources in case you are on the same journey. So let me quickly remind you how Salesforce control data access. There are profiles, permission set, and permission set groups for defining the level of access to the objects and their fields. When it comes to profiles, they have been with us from the beginning of the time. Profiles are mandatory addition to the user. They cannot be taken away. And one user can have only one profile, although profile can be assigned to multiple users. Uh, profile defined the basic access for the user, like I mentioned, so it actually cannot be taken away. That's really important to remember. But when it comes to giving more access to specific users, Salesforce gave us permission set in winter 12. So permission set are actually optional addition to the users. They can be assigned, one permission set can be assigned to multiple users and one user can have, one user can have multiple permission set. So like I mentioned, permission set are actually, they're, a, they're adding a layered access to the user and they're actually enabling us to have more final control on an individual level. In summer 19, Salesforce realized that we have too much, too many permission set sometimes in the org, so they gave us permission set groups. Permission set groups are allowing us to group and combine permission set together so we can actually simplify how we assign those permissions to specific users. And it also gives us the access to um, follow the Salesforce best practice of least privilege access. And when it comes to access to records, we have sharing rules and sharing sets, and record-based sharing is also delivered with other advanced capabilities such as groups, teams, territory, and even a programmatic Apex sharing. So how our journey to data access management look like? So we wanted to tighten the security in our org, and we installed Permission Helper and look at the results from the analyzer. What we realized is that we had more than 50 profiles. We also realized that some of those profiles provide too much access for the access for the users, and that also users for the same department who even have the same profile assigned probably need slightly different access. So what we needed to do is to find a way to get the numbers of profiles down and then simplify assignment process. So that's where permission helper really came handy. So we decided to analyze the profiles and to cut down the numbers of profiles so we can reduce the permissions and profiles and then switch to roles and permission set based data management. And if you're wondering why we decided to convert to permission set, it's because they are stackable, which means we can reduce the number of profiles and simplify our maintenance for our admins. And also they give us more flexibility. That means that we can mix and match based on individual tasks and a more granular level. And like I mentioned, permission helper was really essential in our journey. We couldn't really do it. And in our journey, we used all three of its components. So the first component was permission analyzer, and it has several options to see how the data is being managed in your org. One option is to analyze by permission to view the list of profiles and permission set that contain specific permission. Uh, you can also analyze by user to view a summation of all permission assigned to the user. So using the permission analyzer actually gives us the access to understand the permission structure with just a few clicks. And also it helps us keep our permission assignments up to date. Uh, we also use profile converter, like I mentioned, we decided to convert some profiles to permission set. So profile converter enabled us to convert um, several standard and custom profiles. 
and the generated permission set included all permissions from the selected profile. And the good thing is, when it's converted, it's immediately assignable to multiple users. Um, the only thing I want to highlight here is that you have to be aware of what can be moved from permission to per so sorry for, from profiles to permission sets. So things like object and field access, tab access, Apex access, all that can be moved from profile to permission set. But uh, default record type, page layout assignment, login hours, and IP ranges cannot. So just have that in mind when you are on your journey. And last but not least, we also use permission report from the permission helper that actually has the option to report by user permission and permission dependency while providing a lot of details, including field level security information. So once I told you all about this, let's jump quickly into the demo so you can see the permission helper in action. So this is how the permission analyzer looked like. And as an example here, I'm going to analyze by user, but like I mentioned, you have option to analyze permission or by permission set group. I assigned my user Samantha Jenkins, and I can see that Samantha actually has a profile best salesman assigned, but she also has a permission set called account full access. So Samantha is a salesman. And what I look when I look at the analyzer, I see that based on a profile, Samantha doesn't have access to the account, but that doesn't make sense. But if I go and look at the permission set and click on it and then open the account, I will see that Samantha actually has an access to the account. And through the permission set, I see that she has object permissions and I see several field level permissions as well. So if I just look at the profile, if I just a look at the Samantha in the Salesforce, I'm not sure I would be able to see this. Uh, the second thing we use, as I mentioned, is a converter. So converter will give you a list of all the profiles that you have in your org, and you can you have a really neat filters here to filter by profile name or even filter by um, license. And once you identi identify the profile that you want to convert, you just need to click on the button, click on convert the permission set, and then give it the name and give it the description. And I strongly suggest that you give it the description just to simplify um, maintenance for our admins. And you also have a neat permission, a reminder here, what cannot be moved from the profile to the permission set. And once you're done with that, if you want to go keep going forward and making sure that your security is being maintained as always, you go to the report section of the permission helper. So you can, like I mentioned, report based on user, permission set, or permission set dependency. I decided to see how Samantha Jenkins is looking at the account object, and I decided to include all the fields. So if I go to the report here, I see that based on the object permission, Samantha actually has all the access, and as you can remember, that's based on the, prof, on the permission set. But I can also go into more details and I can actually see all fields on the account object. It says that like that's there are 52 fields. And I can see which access Samantha has to all of these fields. So I would say that's a pretty powerful feature. So let's quickly go back because I want to give you next steps. If you are on your security journey, if you are planning your security audit, um, I strongly suggest that you look into Permission Helper. So you can go to the link that you see on my screen and install Permission Helper, and you can go through all the steps that we followed, which means you can analyze the profiles, review the profiles, make sure that you have the strategy. If you have too many profiles, make sure that you want to uh, downsize the profiles or that the, the profiles that you have are actually doing the what you need to be done. Maybe you need to create more profiles. Maybe you need to retire the existing ones and just use the information that you have to create new ones. And then you uh, should apply the principle of least privilege, which means create a profile that has the least access possible and then use permission set and permission set groups to increase your user access. The benefit of having permission set and permission set groups assigned is because that you is, is because you can you can give specific access to individual users. So you are not really limited to assigning the same access to the users who are having the same role or having a belonging to the same department. 
And on your journey, I also want to give you a few really useful resources that I used. Uh, one of them is always Trailhead. So data security module is really useful for you to go and actually understand how the data security works. I just went click, quickly over that to remind you, but you want to make sure that you understand that in details. Uh, there is also really good video on a Salesforce YouTube channel who's, who's called Who Sees What? And that's really a basic of Salesforce data management. So make sure to watch that one. And as always, Salesforce admins blog is a really, really useful place for all admins and everybody who wants to learn um, how to manage Salesforce. So there is a blog post about simplifying your permissions and they're actually mentioning permission helper. So you can see in details uh, all I talked about this today. But the day is not over yet. So to continue your Salesforce lab journey, check out all the apps that, that, are, that I discussed today that you've seen discussed in today's session, plus all the other amazing Salesforce Labs apps and the link that you can see on my screen. Get exploring these free apps on the App Exchange. Also, follow the Salesforce Labs on Twitter to participate in fun sweep sweepstakes for a chance to win an Apple Watch. That sounds amazing. And all you need to do is answer some fun questions around Salesforce Labs. So restrictions apply and make sure to check the official rules. And finally, be sure to stay on for another amazing session coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you again.